Hi, Vincent. Welcome to my channel. Uh, could you introduce yourself and you and your company to Korean a m a z o n seller, please? Yes. So my name is uh, Vincenzo Toscano. I'm the founder and CEO of Ecomsi. Uh, we are Ecomsi specialized on doing full account management for brands in Amazon, Walmart. We actually just added TikTok to the mix. So now we actually can offer also support for brands in TikTok. And mm -hmm. we also offer support in Alibaba when it comes to B2B. Essentially at Ecomsi, we specialize on global expansion. That's our bread and butter. We really help brands go from A to Z when it comes to launching to these marketplaces. Mm -hmm. And we basically support with everything, PPC, list optimization, yeah. branding, everything that they might need to be successful into these two marketplaces. Yeah. Thank you for your explaining. You can see basically do everything like a PPC, like even TikTok shop too, right? Wow. Yeah, exactly. Very, <laughs> yeah, very interesting. And then, so what do you want to talk about today? I mean, the Korean yeah. Amazon seller, yeah, what they can learn your video. Yeah. Yeah. So I think something I wanted to do my video about today is brand analytics. I feel mm. brand analytics is something that unfortunately is being heavily underutilized. Uh, it's a feature that a lot of people have access to, but they are not really using on a, in the proper way. Right. So what I want to yeah. do with this uh, presentation is basically go through some of the, the basics, how you, you get on board on brand analytics, what are some of the features and how you can leverage them combined with strategy. So you mm -hmm. can basically scale your brand on Amazon forward. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Before we start, um, I'm going to ask you, uh, brand analytics, because, um, let's say, um, brand analytics, they can access a lot of data, right? And yeah. sometimes people ask me, so, you know, out, out of, you know, you know, a lot of tools like a helium 10 jungle skull, and then different tools also, they give us like, they provide us like a lot of data too, right? So if uh, we using brand analytics, uh, sometimes they ask me, so if I use brand analytics, maybe another tool, maybe third party tool, can I just, you know, cancel uh, all tool? Mm -hmm. Can I use only brand analytics? What do you think? Yeah. Um, I just want yeah, to so hear your opinion, yeah. Yeah, so I also hear that a lot. It's like if brand analytics now is giving me data, why should I pay something like, you know, John Pascal, yeah. Healing Sam, all these exactly. things out there. So, I mean, something you have to understand that, yes, brand analytics is 1P data, is data coming directly from Amazon. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you have to be mindful that uh, this tool is limited to the extent of uh, exploratory uh, purposes. What do I mean by this? Like sometimes with tools such as Helium Tem, Jungle Scout, and so on, they give you access to tools that go beyond the main mm -hmm. user that generate cells, which again, it's great to understand which are the cells that bring most of the cells, but at the same time, you want to have that extra edge in terms of also be able to tap into your competition, where they mm -hmm. rank organically and things like that, which unfortunately brand analytics as of now don't offer. So mm -hmm. I still 100% believe like you need some kind of third party tool to complement mm -hmm. that data with brand analytics to make the best decision, basically. Yeah, your answer is perfect. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I hopefully, um, you know, a lot of people are getting, you know, good information. I mean, good right answer from you because a lot of people still ask me, so why should I use like, uh, why do I have to use like another tool? You know, yeah. So it seems it seems like your presentation on brand analytics maybe will be very helpful to Korean Amazon seller. So please um, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Pleasure. So <laughs> essentially, a uh, you're gonna see now um on my screen i'm gonna yeah. share um the slide so um, yeah i can see now sure. yeah very clear here yeah. yeah thank you so yeah essentially what i want to talk about is how we can leverage brand analytics to optimize your Amazon business. I think, uh, as I say, is brand analytics is something is very underutilized. So I'm gonna give you all the steps that you should be implementing on a daily basis with your brand to get this data and basically make uh, smart decisions around your business. So just to start, I wanna start with a quick introduction about myself. So myself mm -hmm. by trade, I'm an aerospace engineer. Uh, basically after, you know, working as an engineer to Rolls Royce, uh, I mm -hmm. realized I wanted to do something beyond being an engineer and that's where the idea of basically creating my own a brand and selling on Amazon came into fruition. So I started selling on Amazon. From there, I also then started going to events and masterminds. And then mm -hmm. I realized, you know, there is a bunch of 
uh, brand owners and people that have amazing ideas, but they are really struggling from the technicality point of view to execute this and basically make it a reality. So that's where I created Ecamc, where we specialize on basically supporting founders uh, with their brands to successfully scale their business on Amazon. As of right now, I have consulted over 1,000 brands. I have a team of over 30 people globally from the US all the way to Japan. We mm -hmm. basically operate across all the regions where Amazon is currently uh, existent. And we have a portfolio of over nine figures and we spend over eight figures in a spend on a yearly basis. So we have mm -hmm. a lot of experience when it comes to managing advertisement. And wow. on top of that, that has allowed us to create a lot of split testing to figure out what is the best thing for your brand. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> a lot of experience. So um, what did when did you start your company? When did you start your company? So the company, uh, the agency started five years ago. Yeah. Five years ago. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. So essentially a quick agenda. We're going to do the introduction. We're going to then deep dive into the features, then some techniques, and then what is going to be the future when it comes to brand analytics. So. Let's start with the introduction. I think something very important for you guys to know is essentially how you get access to this, right? So mm -hmm. in order for you to get access to brand analytics, you need to be part of brand registry. In order for you to get access to brand registry, you need to have a trademark, okay? So very straightforward. Make sure if you're selling in the US and Europe, you get a trademark uh, basically reg register with Amazon. And then once that is the case, you're going to get access to brand analytics, as you can see in my screen. And after that, you're going to basically automatically unlock all the different features that a brand analytics has to offer. As of now, brand analytics have some extra features in the US which are not available in the Europe, which I'm going to highlight which are those. And then at the same time, of course, um, there are certain um, considerations you need to have in considerations, um, depending on the country you're selling on, which I'm also going to be explaining. So brand analytics. So one of the key features uh, when it comes to brand analytics is really you have to understand that the breakdown for you, how the consumers basically discover and search your product. So on top of only um, in, t in terms of giving you the keywords, they're going to break down how the consumer goes from an impression to a click to add to cart to buying your product. And when you start understanding the funnel, then from that you start identifying different trends or patterns. And that's very important because when you start identifying certain trends, that's when you can be very smart from advertisement point of view and basically get insights about how I retarget my consumers, how I do certain changes from an advertisement point of view, or how I make my whole funnel more efficient so I can basically get the peak performance and outperform my competition, which brand analytics also breaks down that for you. Um, when it comes to brand analytics, you basically have seven main features and I'm going to go through all of them. I'm going to show you a real life a scenario from accounts we're managing. So mm -hmm. you can see the before and after after using the data from these features. And basically, it's going to be very easy for you to then implement the case studies I'm going to break for you in the coming slides and then understand, okay, that's how, what I have to do mm -hmm. when I see similar scenarios within my brand. So the first one we're going to cover is basically uh, going to be the search um, catalog performance, right? So mm -hmm. the search catalog performance is essentially a feature where Amazon breaks down for you the whole funnel from impressions, clicks, add to carts, and purchases. Why? So the reason why this is important is because you need to understand that in order for you to be optimal in terms of how you make decisions in terms of increasing the budget on, on your advertisement, if you have to optimize your main images, uh, your title, your bullet points, your pricing, your offer, you need to understand where you drop in the ball. Where is the actual loss of interest happening across the whole funnel? Because different scenarios could be you have very few impressions, very few clicks, but then those clicks, once they get into your listing, the add to cards and the purchase rate is very high. So on that scenario, you're having a traffic issue because as soon as little traffic gets into your listing, the conversion mm -hmm. rate of add to cards and purchases is high. So that tells me, okay, I need to put more money into advertisement and target those keywords in a more aggressive way. If the other scenario happens, which is you have a lot of impressions, a lot of clicks, but then the add to cart 
and the purchase is low, like in the scenario you're seeing right now on my screen, mm -hmm. that's a red flag. And that means there is a fundamental issue with the offer of your listing. So in, in the case of this specific uh, product, we identify that our clicks were very low. We're having a lot of impressions, but our clicks were not very good. And then on top of that, the purchase rate compared to our add to car was also very low. So we say, okay, if clicks are low, that means the first thing they are seeing, which is the image, is not converting very well. We did some split testing by using a tool such as a Pickful mm -hmm. and Intellib. I would identify the winner image for the listing and we change it. And on top of that, the other breaking point we identify within our funnel is purchases. They were adding to the card, mm -hmm. but they were not converting to a purchase. So we say, let's lower the price and let's make sure we basically lower the price to the baseline of some of our competition. And let's see what happens because usually if you have a lot of add to cards, but then the purchases is low, that means people are using the add to card functionality as mm -hmm. a price comparison. They add multiple competitors and then they scroll to the add uh, to the cart and whoever is the cheapest, that's the one they're gonna buy. So if your price point, when it comes to comparing on the card is not the best one, you might be losing your the sell there and that's why your purchase rate is not very high. So in this case, we changed the price and we changed mm -hmm. the image and it basically over a week period, we had a 3% increase in conversion and on top of that, over $3,000 more in sales just by oh, changing okay. the image and mm -hmm. just by doing a change um, mm -hmm. within the price point, right? Okay. I have a question. So you, you told me change the image and the price, right? Uh, if we are talking about the image, could you explain a little bit about the, how you change the image maybe before and after? What is the most mm -hmm. uh, key point? What, what change actually? So yeah, usually the way we change um, images is by first of all doing a, an audience analysis. So for example, we use our partners um, at Peakful and in Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. And then what we do, what we do with them is like we identify okay, so this specific a product is let's say a yoga mat, right? I need to understand how a person does yoga usually likes to uh, perceive a design, right? In terms of an image. So what we do is we try to identify wrestling yoga mats and then the other is gonna be as an example after doing a research, women between 20s, um, uh, between their 20s and 50, then they like certain type of um, behavior in terms of sport, in terms of culture, X, Y, and Z. Once we define the avatar to a very granular level, then we go to these uh, services and we say, find me people that matches this criteria and give me 100, 200 people, and I'm gonna give them five, six images to test. So in terms of how I test these five, six images, mm -hmm. usually I test things such as the angle of the product, uh, the, if if either including or not the packaging on the main image, uh, the size of how big it looks in the picture, adding certain accessories, and usually a good way to come up with ideas about which element to test is ChatGPT. So for example, sometimes with ChatGPT, I give them an image and I ask them, give me ideas about how you would change this image of six oh. to seven variables. And mm -hmm. then I will test that with some of those services. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Um, in your experience, uh, does A-B testing images through Pickpool really help to improve CTR? From my experience, yes, of course, yes. But I still get you know, many questions because um, um, they have to spend the money um, using Pickpool, right? So from your experience, what do you think? Really yeah, so I would say for sure. It's very yeah. helpful, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, always do this beforehand because at the end of the day, people on Amazon are buying images. They're not mm. buying a product. So oh. if your image is not on point from day one, you're going to struggle. Okay, Next. makes sense, yeah. yeah. Please keep continue, yeah. So once we uh, understand the catalog performance uh, report, then we have the query one, which is at the keyword level. So this one also is very uh, important. Uh, and in this case, we're having the brand view, which by the way, you can have one at the brand view, and then you can have one at the ASIN view. In this example, I wanted to use the brand view. And basically what I did here is I wanted to identify keywords that have a high search query score. That means Amazon identified these keywords to be very relevant in terms of how they correlate to my brand. But on top of that, the search volume and interest is also very high. So that is how the score is defined and other KPIs in terms of compression and so on. So once I define these keywords, 
then I come up, for example, in, in this case, I was having a look at the keyword smoked salt, right? So in, in this case, you can see the red circles in the screen. I had a, a conversion of 1037 brand share in terms of impressions and brand share in terms of uh, purchases of 636%. So usually when I, I identify keywords like this, I say, okay, this is actually a very important keyword for me, how I can actually improve my brand share. Because I mean, for example, 10% is it's not super high, but also not super low brand share, but I wanna have more market share. I wanna keep increasing my dominance on this keyword. So in this case, what we did is a very simple strategy. It went from number two, as you can see in the previous skin to number one now. And what we did here is like simple top placement exact match campaign. So with PPC, we target very aggressively that keyword. We went from 10% to 13%. So almost 3.5% increase in impression share. So that's huge when we're talking mm -hmm. thousands of impressions, just by being more aggressive with the PPC showing at the top. And on top of that, what we did is we also uh, basically reduce your price to the medium price, which Amazon also tells you what is the average price on that keyword. And then we managed to increase our sales by 15% just by doing this little change. Very aggressive, exact match campaign, top placement, reducing the price to the medium. And we went from number two uh, in terms of um, the score to number one, and we actually increased our brand share across the board. So these are very quick example how you can find keywords where you're still not the 100% dominant, and then you can do strategies at the PPC level and price point, and then of course, conversion factors such as images to increase your dominance in terms of brand share, right? And it's on, oh, so something that you can only do with brand analytics because without this data, you wouldn't be able, this is your position in the market. Um, now, you also have the query performance at the ASIN level, as I briefly mentioned. Here, for example, what you can do is you can also identify, for example, keywords that you have a low uh, brand share. So I mean, in the similar example, as I did with the smoke, a style keyword as an example. Here we have a keyword that, for example, um, we are actually struggling in terms of really having a market share. We don't have as, as a high market share as we want. So what do we do in this scenario? The thing that we do in this scenario is then that we say, okay, given that we basically not having um, the best uh, control in terms of brand, let's actually figure out how uh, we increase our clicks and add to cars, right? And here you can see how we, we had an impression share of uh, 0.96% and click share of 0.75 in terms of the keyword uh, click share. So from that, we then jump to the following after doing a change in terms of dominance. The mm -hmm. very simple change that we did was simple, uh, understanding, okay, we need to actually target all the competitors that are within this keyword. So on my screen, of course, I I, mm -hmm. I blurry for uh, privacy reasons, mm -hmm. but in, the, in that blurry area, uh, you actually uh, disclose all the top ASINs that are actually controlling that keyword. So the thing that we did, is we run very aggressive sponsor product uh, campaigns on those essence by targeting them basically with a sponsor product uh, strategy. And mm -hmm. then by being very aggressive, we stole their traffic, we stole their sales. And then you can see how we went from 0 96 and 0 75 to now one uh, 1.9 and um, 4 2020 click share. So we increase our share across both fronts very fast just by being very strategic and brand analytics telling us these are the products that are controlling those keywords, therefore attack those. And we increase the sales from 25 units to eight, mm -hmm. eight, uh, 89 units. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So um, super powerful. Yeah. yeah so powerful. Um, can you explain a little bit about the search quality score? Uh, is a high score is good or lower is it better? Search yeah, quality so you, score. Yeah. Yeah, so the search query basically is something that Amazon doesn't disclose 100% in terms of um, 
basically the important in mm -hmm. terms of how it's calculated actually so because uh, the way we uh, actually presume is calculated by doing our own testing is a combination of search volume combination of relevancy but also mm -hmm. combination how our pros behave into that keyword compared to yours in the same subcategory so it's a, it, they, they haven't really disclosed the per, the formula that give you the score but yes they higher the score usually the key is more important for you mm, okay okay i got it Thank you for explaining. Yeah, keep continuing, yeah. please. Yeah. So now um, we're also talking here from the perspective of a uh, top keywords, which is another feature. So the nice thing of here is that basically what you can do is you can identify what are the top keywords within your specific niche, right? So this is mm -hmm. super powerful because you can then prepare for seasonalities. Like for example, you wanna prepare for Prime Day, you wanna prepare for Christmas, you wanna prepare for Halloween, you wanna prepare for Father's Day, Mother's Day. You can go back in time, as you can see in the screen, you can actually change the date, the month and the period. And you can ask Amazon, tell me what are the keywords that during this specific period had the best performance in terms of a uh, search uh, frequency rank and so on. And on top of that, not only you can go back in time and have the answer about which were the best keywords, you can also actually see on the screen, Amazon gives you which are the pros that were the dominant on that keyword on that specific period. So let's say you wanna launch a product for Christmas coming up 2024, mm -hmm. you can go to Christmas 2023, see a specific keyword, see uh -huh. how the keyword was performing in December last year, mm -hmm. see which are the pros that were making the most sales, and then basically reverse engineer those listings, see what they were doing, and then try to prepare for a launch in 2024 December. So super yeah. powerful. And on top of that, you can even use this to find the top keywords to optimize your listings as well. Okay, yeah. that makes sense, yeah. Yeah. So. On top of that, um, another metric that you can use, which is very powerful for brand analytics, mm -hmm. is what we call the repeat purchase uh, behavior metric. So this one is something that is gonna allow you to understand, okay, um, I'm actually losing um, repetition within my funnel, right? So mm -hmm. for example, Amazon can break down for you things such as um, the repeat order uh, of sales over a specific period of time. So as you can see on my screen on the two circles, I can compare, okay, my percentages are going up, my percentages going down. And basically based on these decisions, you can understand, okay, if my percentages are going down in terms of repeat purchase behavior, that means a lot of people are not coming back to me and buying on a, a repeated basis. So how do I fix this? I fix this by being more aggressive with my subscribe and save a um, uh, mm. basically a discount. I'd be yeah. more aggressive with the coupons that can be for my save and subscribe uh, customers. I can be more aggressive with sponsor display retargeting, people that have bought from in the last 15, 30, 60, 90 days. You can basically figure out if you're dropping the ball in terms of winning more um, um, repeat uh, consumers and mm -hmm. retargeting to basically bring them back uh, to your funnel, right? So. That's super okay. powerful because yeah. if you don't do that, uh, mm -hmm. especially for supplements, things that have to do with, for example, makeup, uh, consumables, mm -hmm. and you don't figure out where you actually standing on a, on a purchase behavior from month to month, mm -hmm. uh, it can easily become um, very bad for you very fast because if you start losing a, a purchase behavior, that mm -hmm. means other brands are stealing from you and you need to basically tailor your strategies around that. Yeah, I have a question. So what percentage discount do you usually offer to your product subscriber? So usually I try to be as aggressive as possible, 10, 15%. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. I, the reason for that is because, uh, especially for pros that have to do with a uh, recurring behavior in terms of purchase, it's always gonna be cheaper to give a 10, 15% seven subscribe that have, mm -hmm. that have to pay the customer acquisition cost. So I'd rather uh, sacrifice a big percentage and keep that cash flow coming in, which then I can use that cash flow to keep acquiring more customers mm -hmm. that basically having to lose them because I'm not giving them the best deal in terms of staying with me as a consumer. So that's usually the pers uh, yeah the perspective you have to see it from. Okay, you recommend 10% to 15%, right? That's correct. Yeah, so what's there actually much uh, of a difference between 5% to 5% and 10%? What do you think actually is a different, like a repeat 
um, yeah Christian. i have seen a big difference so usually oh. from my experience it is mm -hmm. huge uh, i mean it, this is, is at least from what i see on my brand so usually mm -hmm. if you do save and subscribe let's be honest like would you even you have to be in the shoes of the consumer would you get excited if somebody gives you only five percent it's like not really exciting right it needs to be something that actually makes mm -hmm. you go the extra mile and save and subscribe so that's why i think 10 percent is on that range that really goes beyond what is the norm when it comes to discount and can really mm -hmm. make a difference yeah yeah thank you for your advice so if people are watching this video um only you getting like a five percent discount uh, now maybe do more than five percent maybe ten percent to fifteen percent because uh, vincent your advice for ten percent is much better than five percent okay thank you for your advice vincent yeah i think great content so yeah keep doing yeah. please so another important thing is demographics so amazon tells you essentially uh, all the information in terms of the age range the income uh, the education the gender the market basically um yeah it's status if they're married single and so on so why this is important because if you start to identify that people within a, a range of age income education gender and status are buying your product more than others you can be very strategic and basically say okay people that are within this range usually tend to buy my product more so in this example you're seeing my screen i can easily see that married people usually tend to buy my product the most and people that are within a, uh, a data range of between 25 and 55. And then you can see that people that usually in terms of income makes around 75 to $100,000 per year are usually the consumers that buy my product. So if you then start to identify these metrics, you can have tailored marketed strategies. You can then optimize your following products in the future to tailor within that price point because you have identified the perfect mix for your branding. And on top of that, you can enhance your uh, customer experience. You can also do retargeting around that specific avatar. And over time and over time and over time, you're gonna basically mm -hmm. nurture to a very granular level who is a perfect avatar and you can be very smart with the advertisement that you're on in the future. Yeah. Now, another thing that I love is market basket analysis. Basically, Amazon tells you what the pros people will buy in correlation to yours. So they give you basically the Pandora box that if people buy this pro, they buy this pro next to yours. And why this is super important? Because then you can figure out, okay, what are some of the bundle ideas I can come up with? What are some of the cross-selling opportunities? Like if pro usually uh, some of my consumer buy this product and combine with this product, mm -hmm. this is basically the strategy um, I should do in terms of creating this as a bundle or maybe reduce the price of this product because usually they buy with this more expensive version. So you can start basically figure out the whole branding, uh, basically web in terms mm -hmm. of how this product connects to this product, how this product connects to this product. And when you start understanding the behavior of how consumers buy your products, um, that's where you really, your brand can have a significant jump. And we see this across multiple brands. Like you see, for example, how brands such as Apple, they started only with computers, but then they created an ecosystem around the headphones, the iPod, the iPhone, the a iPad, all of that. So essentially with your brand in, in Amazon, you can do the same. Maybe you start only with a water bottle, but then you see people who buy water bottle with a yoga mat and then yoga mat with a yoga bag, a yoga bag with yoga blocks. And then you start building that brand, which at the end of the day, that's how you should be building your business on Amazon in the first place. Um, another thing that I love is this feature, for example, is only in the US right now, but is understanding the loyalty of your brand uh, against basically the consumers are buying them. So why this is super important? I strongly believe in 2024 is a year that we need to stop talking about tacos, echoes, and conversion. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, it's important, but I think the most important thing is actually um, what we call um, lifetime value, right? So why is that? The reason for that is because we need to understand that 
usually specifically on Amazon with the increase of, of cost per click, the competition and so on, if you start focusing only on that single point of content, that means only the first client comes to you, they buy from you and then they will never come back to you. You're doing things wrong. You need to focus on once you get that client through the door, how I actually sell them more things, right? And that's mm -hmm. the whole concept of even a supermarket. Like if imagine people going to a supermarket, they only will buy a, a I don't know, like an orange juice and nothing else. And then we'll leave. Like the whole reason why supermarkets make money is because they're able to upsell other things in the same place. So you have to think from the same perspective, how I increase the lifetime value of that consumer that cost me so much to get through my door. And now Amazon basically breaks down those figures for you, like how the lifetime value is increasing, the repeat purchase behavior. And then what you can do with that is basically tailor, first of all, your whole catalog towards increasing the lifetime value. So one product, for example, if you're selling vitamin C, you will also sell vitamin D or magnesium or omega-3 because they are part of the same family and they're part of the same lifestyle. So that's why you have to start making smart decisions about how you create your catalog. And the second thing as well, in terms of how you increase the loyalty of your consumers is about the experience. On top of the product, what else are you offering them? Are you giving them an experience with basically a community? Are you giving them maybe a specific access to a digital asset? Are you giving them some kind of a benefit? Maybe let's say you have supplements, you give them a temporary percent discount with a specific gym a uh, subscription like there are so many ways that you can leverage a uh, basically the consumers that come to you to make them become loyal and once they become loyal that's the most powerful thing because mm -hmm. that's when they start recommending your product to your to their friends their family and that's where people start really driving uh, your brand right yeah exactly now another thing that you can also um very quickly, very similar that the one before, like you can see here on the screen how Amazon now start giving you approximation of the lifetime, lifetime value. And here, for example, you can be very strategic about if my lifetime value is going up, that means I'm doing things correctly. If it's going down, that means you need to be more strategic with your sponsor display, your retargeting, your subscribe and save and things along those lines. So you keep your consumers engaged with your brand over and over again. Now, Let's talk about mm -hmm. techniques because so far we've been talking about uh, the features, but now actually how we implement those, right? So yeah. for example, a, a technique I use is keyword optimization, right? So for example, something that you can do very fast in terms of start implementing from today, with brand analytics, you can identify what are some of those keywords that have a high search query performance report, and then you can start a um, uh, search query um, a score and you actually start including them within your listing, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes you will be amazed how many times they do audits and people don't have the actual keywords in terms of, you know, the title, the bullet points and so on. And they're dropping the ball there big time in terms of SEO. Amazon is telling you those are the keywords you have to be there, basically um, optimizing for and you're not including them within your listing. Then the other thing that's super important is basically the rankings of things. Brand analytics tells you what are the keywords you have to be ranking in terms of organically. Because if Amazon is telling you this amount of keywords is the one that give you X amount of traffic and these competitors, which are your top competitors, are dominating X amount of the market share. If you're nowhere there, that means you need to slowly get into that um, basically position so you can start getting control of the revenue. And on top of that, uh, with brand analytics, if you identify certain um, conversion metric, like let's say most people on a keyword is uh, converting at 10%, and you're only converting at 2%, in order for you to get rank, you know that you need to start converting at 10%. And you do this by reducing the price, playing with mm -hmm. the images, and so on. Then something we also do is research. So for example, as I showed you before, a, a strategy that we do on a monthly basis, we keep researching every single month what is are the top keywords in terms of the search query score and the mm -hmm. frequency and everything. And if that changes, we'll make sure our PPC and, and listing optimization changes according to that. So we are always on top of trends and we are dynamic with the market. And, and the final two, which are very important, which is discovery and brand discovery is every single month there's going to be new terminologies coming to play and with brand analytics you can catch them 
as soon as Amazon identify them as new trendy and important keywords, mm -hmm. and you can start adding them to your listing. And then when it comes to brand, it's very important that, for example, by using um, things such as um, the top keywords report, mm -hmm. right? You can start identifying, okay, there are certain keywords that correlate to my product that actually uh, will allow me to expand uh, the up, um, the reach of my brand. So for example, if you put right now on the top keywords feature, the one I showed you before, yoga, then you're gonna see that yoga is then gonna generate yoga blog, yoga mat, or different uh, keywords are very important correlation to yoga. And then from a branding perspective, you can come up and say, oh, actually as a brand, I'm not targeting that niche. Let me mm -hmm. actually tap into those keywords as well. And um, first of all, optimize my copy if my product is related to that. And maybe come up with research, uh, pro research ideas from that perspective, mm -hmm. okay? Okay. Um, now, another uh, interesting strategy is mm -hmm. how you actually implement a, the pro listing optimization, how you enhance it, right? Yeah. So for example, um, going back to what you were mentioning, like uh, what is the importance of, of the score, right? So mm -hmm. sometimes people struggle to identify what the relevant cues to have in their title, bullet points and description. So every single time you use brand analytics, you wanna make sure that your top keywords, at least your top 20, 30 keywords from brand analytics that have a high score are within this location, title, bullet points and description. If you do that, trust me, you're gonna have such an easy journey to get position because those are the keywords that Amazon wants you to be related to and end up bringing sales to your competitors and therefore you have to focus on those. The other thing is going back to the demographic strategy. If you didn't understand certain data age, set mm -hmm. a gender um, revenue um, in terms of a um, bandwidth, in terms mm -hmm. of band, you can use that to create a tonality and to rec um, create some kind of a copy to then optimize your bullet points, a uh, title uh, and so on. So you can actually talk in the same, uh, basically chemistry level that those kind of a uh, demographic uh, need to, in order to convey with you as, as a brand, right? Mm -hmm. And then three and four going and making emphasis continually some optimization getting keywords on a monthly basis and doing split testing. And when you do split testing, that means if you do a change on the title, bullet points and description, then the good thing over analytics, let's say you do a change in February, then you do and wait until March, then you can compare what is it's changing impression, clicks and conversion from one month to another and see if your optimization actually uh, is working. And pricing, very important. Brand analytics gives you what is the average price uh, in terms of the specific uh, niche. So you can also use that uh, as, a, as a starting point to basically tailor if your mm -hmm. uh, offer is within the standards that you need to be to have a good conversion as well. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. the price itself thing. So I wanted to put it on a more uh, graphical way. Something that you want to uh, basically do with brand analytics is basically always keep monitoring what mm -hmm. is the uh, average price on the market. And on top of that, if you didn't identify the price of your competitors, see how they're positioning in brand analytics, because if they have certain price and the top three have certain price, then they keep their consistency across ranking and they have a medium of $12 and you're at $20, you need to understand that the reason why they're having such a good performance is maybe because they're very consistent with their price and they're very similar in between. So you identify those kind of trends, you need to split uh, the pricing. And once you split, split uh, the, the pricing, the same thing I've been explaining all along. You need to go back one week and see if the week uh, 32 compared to week 31, which a brand analytics allow you to even compare by week. After changing the price, it gives you a bigger bump in your in your funnel, like impression, clicks, conversion share, in terms of add to cards and purchases. Um, and finally, PPC. So PPC mm -hmm. is also a very important thing, which I'm sure most of you are wondering how you can use a uh, brand analytics for that. So for example, you can use brand analytics to understand your competition, what are the keywords they are positioned in terms of organically. You can use those keywords to create the structure of your campaign and tailor that with demographic uh, insights about, 
For example, especially we're using sponsor display, if you identify certain behaviors, you can retarget them by understanding those are the ones that tend to have better conversion. And once you also then have the best keywords of uh, basically uh, bringing the most to your competition and Amazon tells you they have the highest score for you, then you wanna have a, a lot of split testing. So split testing means changing the bits, changing the placement from week to week, and be, basically track from week to week what happens to those keywords to your a query. They're going up, they're going down in terms of conversion, in terms of brand share. And that's where you make a basically very conscious decision about if actually um, the way you're optimizing your PPC is actually giving you a benefit or it's actually harming uh, your performance. And another extra tip to conclude the PPC side of things, with brand analytics, you can even identify if you're doing key recanalization, right? Because this is a thing that people suffer a lot. Like, let's say you have a keyword that you have a, your impression clicks add to cars and purchases, and you have a lot of impressions because you have very high organic and also very high under advertisement. If you then remove a, your advertisement, and then you see that your impressions drop, but then when it comes to the actual clicks add to current purchase, it doesn't change a lot. That means in essence, you were cannibalizing um, um, your own traffic. You were generating more clicks and more impressions because mm -hmm. now they are lower, but your add to cars and purchase didn't change. So that means in essence, you were paying for traffic that you had guaranteed. So that's something you can analyze say, with brand analytics. Um, and finally, yeah. Another thing I recommend is the pro research uh, tool. So with pro research, which is also Power Brand Analytics, now you can also identify search terms. Uh, you can now even, Amazon tells you customer reviews insights, super powerful. It tells you if you look for a specific product, as you can see in my screen here, it tells you, first of all, what are the top click products on that category? What are the top keywords? What do people uh, usually think about in terms of reviews? What's the main reasons people buy the product, which is that super powerful, and mm -hmm. the reason why people return the product. So essentially now Amazon has combined essentially what we've been doing with ChatGPT manually. And now you have it under the single console and it's very easy for you to make decisions as well. So I recommend all everybody to use this, not only for pro research, but also to get insights about your product. You could put your product here, yeah. and figure out who are the dominants and basically target them with sponsored product campaigns, get mm -hmm. the best keywords, optimize your listings and so on. Um, um, basically these are the four launch phases I want you guys to be aware of. Uh, when it comes to launching a product with brand analytics, uh, something that I do is the pro uh, explorer um, pro opportunity explorer as I just sh show. So identify the top keywords, what are my top competitors? I optimize my listing with those keywords, and then I prepare my PPC targeting the top competitors that are getting the biggest market share. Then I use the insert from uh, basically uh, brand analytics to optimize. Um, everything in terms of okay, if these are the keywords that have the highest. Um, search query. I want to have you know, my title, bullet points, and description as I just show. Then I want to use brand analytics to identify the keywords I need to target my PPC as I also gave you the strategy. And finally, you need to make sure brand analytics on a weekly basis is part of your SOP, your procedure to mm -hmm. when you do changes on your PPC, you track what happens to your basically your query from top to bottom of the funnel. Um, finally, Something I want to conclude with in terms of brand analytics is the mm -hmm. future. I think people ask me all the time, what is going to happen with brand analytics? And we see more than ever, brand analytics is, is digging deeper into things such as predictive analytics. So as of now, they already give us prediction of the lifetime value. And they're also starting to give more prediction in terms of certain KPIs. So as brand analytics gets smarter and smarter with the behavior of basically how people shop on Amazon, and combining that with historical data, brand analytics basically gonna be the Pandora box that you need to be a successful seller. So you need to master it from now. Uh, another thing that I strongly believe is gonna come to brand analytics with the e huge deploy of, of Alexa, we're gonna mm -hmm. see more and more insights from brand analytics about what are some of the voice uh, interaction Alexa doing with the consumer in terms of how they shop. And you're gonna be able to optimize with that. And also the visual side of things in terms of which images perform the best and so on. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the last three points, which I, I think as well by having my interaction with brand analytics is we're gonna have more real time data and insights. So 
as of now, the API is closed, so you don't have real-time data. You have to manually download the files and do your micros and, manu and manually create basically um, yeah. your your way of visualizing data. Mm -hmm. But they're going to open these APIs this year, so I'm very excited to see what's wow. going to happen with brand analytics mm -hmm. once everybody now can use their API and create tools out of brand analytics. Um, and finally, I think um, the granularity. So they're going very deep. As you could see now, you already can have the age, uh, how much money people usually make when they buy your, um, in terms of the, the income band. They give you the gender, they give you the the, the status. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not gonna be surprising now they start giving you even like uh, where, they, where they live or mm -hmm. what are some of the very, specific yeah. things which i know it can be scary to some extent but then from advertisement point of view you can be very smart with that mm -hmm. so i think that's everything of course is very technical and i'm sure a lot of you mm -hmm. will need to rewatch this multiple times but i can guarantee you if you master brand analytics uh, you're gonna see a significant uplift across mm -hmm. the board because it's not only something that gives you data uh, for basically understanding what are your best keywords. It's also something that goes beyond that, understanding your consumer. And if you understand your consumer from top to bottom, from mm -hmm. top of the funnel to basically closing the consumer, you can be clear with the way you optimize your listing, the way you do images, the way you do your advertisement, and the way you keep them engaged with mm -hmm. report your strategies to basically grow your brand and your cash flow forward. Um, that's everything. Uh, of course, it's <laughs> been a pleasure. And you can see in the screen, I gave yeah. a specific offer to my close friend, Bob Pio here. Uh, basically, you can... Um, schedule a call uh, with my team more than happy to explore how it comes here as a full a uh, brand management agency can help you implement okay. brand analytics for your brand and scale it forward so thank you so okay. much yeah. <laughs> thank you for your time and uh, i feel like you are a very hard worker thank you for your presentation this is like you know master class about brand analytics a to z right <laughs> yeah 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 it's ve you. very happy and a very valuable content uh, so thank you for all the insight on brand analysts today. Uh, how can we contact you in the future? I mean, I can put it in, you know, below this video, your contact information. So if you, somebody watching this video, if they, if you guys want to contact Pinsenjo, he comes in, uh, please, uh, you know, make sure watching, you know, below the video, I put it there, you know, all contact information. Okay. And then we can also, uh, Pinsenjo offer to, um, you guys like a 30 minute free consulting. So if you guys contact Vincenzo or you come see, uh, you can mention, uh, I just watching this video and then I'm a, one of the Seller Kingdom member. I just want to uh, get, you know, 30 minute pre consulting and then, you know, please contact right, um, that way, right way. Uh, I definitely recommend that. Um, and then Vincenzo, I'm going to drop some of the, you know, question if you can, mm -hmm. if you are okay. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Go for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm going to ask you, you know, current Amazon, you know, in sense of competition, you know, Temu, and then right now it's a, a lot of people say Temu is going to be big, you know, crushing, you know, in U.S. market. And then a lot of Amazon sellers, um, um, they selling like some kind of product and then Temu also selling same product, but much cheaper than Amazon. Uh, so what do you think? Is it Temu is it, going to be really big hit, you know, big you know, Amazon, uh, USA market, what do you think? Yeah, so I mean, this is a concern that, um, you know, we had the same concern and we still have the same concern with platforms such as TikTok. Mm -hmm. I strongly believe that Temo, yes, it's a strong player, but I have big concerns with those platforms and I'm going to tell you which are those. So we have seen platforms such as Wiz doing the same and mm -hmm. basically it didn't work out. They kind of basically yeah. went bankrupt, right? Then we see TikTok doing the same, but let's be honest, TikTok, we're starting to hear mixed feelings. Like people is already, you know, figure out that yes, things are cheap, but at the same time, they're very bad. Yeah. So quality is not good. With Temo, we're hearing, uh, we're starting to hear, yeah, it's very cheap, but you know, sometimes the quality is not there, the customer service, if I want to return something, it's a hassle, I don't get it next day. So I think my main concern with this platform is that, yes, they're going to give a, an extra edge in terms of um, the way you have to adapt as a as a seller specifically, because you're going to have 
all these basically cheaper alternatives getting market share in terms of stealing traffic from you. But at the end of the day, if you focus on building a brand, which is what I, I focus mm -hmm. the presentation all along, like yeah. I, I wouldn't be concerned because at the end of the day, your competition is not going to be the cheap product coming from China. That is going to be something, you know, without a nice packaging, like a, a poly bag, very a bad presentation. Like people, especially in Europe, and the USA, I'm mm -hmm. seeing more and more people focusing on branding. Like if you're giving something like really a uh, customized in terms of the way you take care of your consumer, I will never be afraid of competing with a cheap product because I know I can give something that uh, an experience that a cheap product cannot provide. It's the same with mobile phones. Like why would yeah. you buy sometimes an iPhone that is <laughs> so expensive yeah, that you have story. some mm -hmm. some phones coming from china that are only 200 dollars and they're very similar so my point is yes you need to be aware of this uh, platform such as demo tiktok shop mm -hmm. and we are actually interacting with some of them mm -hmm. but for example for most brands out there that are trying to build a product that is actually a a quality product mm -hmm. they they where you're going to struggle on those platform is price point most of those Plus from platforms, if you try to sell something for more than fifteen dollars, you're gonna struggle because those platforms are built for very cheap things, mm -hmm. um, things that are very impulse driven, especially TikTok. Mm -hmm. So, as soon as you start building something premium, those platforms are not gonna be for you. And the second thing is where they really gonna struggle, Temo and TikTok, they're never gonna be able to catch up in terms of a uh, logistics. And we know for a fact that people love same day delivery or next day delivery. And that's something mm -hmm. that Amazon, fortunately, is has years and years of basically uh, advantage. And that's mm -hmm. what I think um, Amazon is gonna use to basically keep their leadership in the market, yeah. Yeah, that's very good opinion, I mean, very good. So if you guys uh, worry about too much about, you know, don't worry. Kimu, yeah. <laughs> and Ali Express and uh, don't worry about it. Just focus on your own brand. Yeah, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we talk about the brand, um sometimes people say only large corporation um can survive on this day. Um or what do you think? Or a small, you know, corporation can also make a good brand. From your experience, I want to hear your experience because a lot of people sometimes, you know, Amazon selling is right now it's mm -hmm. very difficult to selling because a lot of um increase P. So I'm a you know maybe small corporation or I'm a um you know small company. How can I survive on um, Amazon? So from your experience, what do you think about like this kind of scenario? Yeah. Yeah, so I would say I understand the concern, like especially uh, the fact that the fees are going up, PPC is, mm -hmm. is more expensive, uh, and essentially things are getting more and more complex. Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, uh, I don't believe that, you know, only corporations can be successful because first of all, the beauty of being a solopreneur and basically starting your team from scratch, you're gonna have the flexibility in terms of making decisions that big corporation can. And when it comes to that, if you're a very innovative person, and a person knows how to make decision in, in, mm -hmm. a, in a smart way, you can sometimes outperform some of them. I understand that you may think, yes, you have more money than me and all of that. But I, I see that all the time on Amazon. Companies that are very big drop in significantly the market share because then people have a huge drive to make it basically into the entrepreneurship uh, journey, they mm -hmm. really start thinking outside the box, which some of these big corporations can. So as an advice, like, yeah. Focus first of all on creating communities. I think um, I understand product is very important. And that's of course going to be seventy percent of your success. You need to have a product that has demand and has a unique feature. Like you're bringing mm -hmm. something like it's really um, providing a value that is really not there. So you can basically use that as a diversification uh, method. But the second thing is community. The reason why community is important and why social commerce we're bringing that to our brand yeah. is because uh, the days of only relying on Amazon are also coming to some extent to an end because given the competition, and that's why I'm building up this case, if you only rely on the marketplace to give you the traffic and the sales, then what happens if down the line more competitors come to Amazon or your account gets shut down or you get an issue with Amazon, your whole business is over. So instead of that, if you start focusing and see Amazon, not as a business, but as a channel, and then you build your Walmart operations, you build your TikTok operation mm -hmm. and your Shopify operations, mm -hmm. that's, I think, the advice. And that's what actually we do with all our brands. We try to go uh -huh. multi-channel 
and global because I think that there's all, all, only been one channel at the time uh, are going to be tough as things get more and more competitive. Yeah, that's a very good point. So you guys like focus on not only Amazon channel, of course, Amazon is an important market um, place and also platform, um, good pipeline. But also, same time, you need to focus on your own channel, like maybe Shopify and then different maybe Walmart or TikTok, um, whatever you can. Um, you can maybe extend to another marketplace. Yeah, That's I agree uh, yeah, with your opinion. And if you don't mind, can I ask you uh, about PPC because you just mentioned about the PPC. So I'm, I'm going to now have uh, some kind of question. This question, really, I got all the time from, you know, my audience, my subscriber. Can I ask you about PPC? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So what's your thought on the impact of the of a budget um, on individual campaign is uh, Amazon PPC. If the same condition, like a uh, same keyword targeting manual um, campaign, also like a bid, be the same bid strategy, um, same, you know, bid amount, uh, but only budget is different. Like uh, this campaign, um, $20 is daily budget. This campaign is like a uh, hundred dollar. Let's say, okay, um, $15 budget, maybe 50, $15, Fifty dollar. So, do you think the body is actually impact on campaign? What do you think from your experience? Yeah, so that's actually a good point. So we have encountered that when we do actually um, a structure in at the PPC level, that if you use very small budget at the campaign level, you limit significantly mm -hmm. the exposure that some of these campaigns can have. Especially if you have many keywords, which I never advise. Mm -hmm. Max, I would recommend five to ten keywords on a campaign. Yeah. But on a budget, usually yes, I will try to have at least all this fifty dollar or so mm -hmm. because if you give us very as very small budget. They the way Amazon th thinks from their perspective, this budget has to last me, you know, the whole day. And therefore, it, sometimes it might limit the exposure that the campaign may have, uh, or it might go out of budget very fast. And then you will never be able to grasp enough data to actually do your optimization. So usually 30 to $50 per campaign is the bare minimum. And mm -hmm. then of course, what you can do if you're afraid of overspending, just put a daily limiter at the account level within settings. And therefore mm -hmm. you can have your $50 campaigns, but at the account you have a 300 per day limit. Mm -hmm. And if things get out of control, you can always break it with that daily limiter, but never have campaigns with very low budget because either mm -hmm. they go out of stock very fast um, and basically you cannot have enough data or um, or you give a signal to Amazon, especially when they are competitive keywords, that you don't have enough budget for exposure. And that's when sometimes you can have also the behavior where come a keywords don't get any impressions or clicks. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. So if you guys watching this video, uh, please change your campaign um, budget. Mm -hmm. So if your campaign budget is too low, I think sometimes people like put $5 in one campaign budget. I think that's too low. So you need to yeah. increase your budget $5 to like maybe $50 if you want to buy data from you know Amazon. So $5 budget, I think you cannot buy anything <laughs> or you need to like yeah. spend maybe 30 days to buy just a little data. Yeah. So I agree with your opinion. And then, you know, um, next question is, um, uh, not, right now is a lot of people talk about the AI things, right? Um, also Amazon, they want to put in AR search. Um, so we can now see any kind of like AI um, feature in Amazon. For example, like a seller center, they put it in the AI search feature. And yep. also um, customer side, they can now find out any, any type of like product they just take a photo and then they can actually search in Amazon using like a Amazon seller and uh, Amazon um, app, shopping app. Yeah. So um, what do you think is AI shopping um, thing is a really big impact for the, um, for the future, you know, Amazon business. If that is true, uh, what we prepare for that, you know, how do we optimize in, uh, our listing? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so AI is a big thing, like uh, Amazon Cosmo is basically going to be the new system driven, driving that uh, basically 
a brain behind AI. Something that's going to happen on Amazon is Amazon is trying to go from being a keyword search system to be a more a behavior search system. So that means based on how you behave in the platform, what are some of your past purchases, they're going to recommend you certain products because that tailor more to your specific behavior. So now why that's important for you as a seller? That means the days of only doing keyword uh, research and optimizing on keyword are getting basically potentially to an end because now it's going to be more toward how your product has um, some kind of um, correlation in terms of um, the semantic of what your product actually means in the Amazon eyes, right? And that's why you have to start being very clear with your, for example, image optimization. Let's mm -hmm. say you're selling um, a yoga mat and that yoga mat is meant for people in the beach that do yoga in the beach but let's say you put that into the copy but you don't put that into the image that means in the image oh. there's nobody using the yoga mat on the beach there's the the correlation that ai is going to do by analyzing your images and see mm -hmm. that you're not actually representing the usage of your product might give you now some indexation and ranking uh, issues because the images don't represent the usage of the product. So now that means that images are gonna be more important than ever. If you're targeting certain people in terms of avatar, you mm -hmm. have to make sure now that they are part of your images. And when it comes to keyword research, we need to go now beyond only generic keywords. We need to really focus on the semantic and really go in depth in terms of what is the actual correlation between my product mm -hmm. and an activity. So when the AI is looking for a product that basically can solve a specific issue, given the optimization on my images and copy, my pro is gonna be some of the suggestions that's gonna come out to the AI. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hundred percent agree with your opinion. Like even this day we can try if you if you guys are using like a chat GPT or through the AI anything, uh, multimodal um version AI service, you can just drop your image in your chat and then ask them, you know, what do you think about my um image? And then um they they, they actually can lead and they actually understand your image. So if That's you correct. guys will, yeah target some kind of your avatar, you're saying avatar, right? Um you yeah. need to make sure like uh, Put it in the image, like uh, for example, like uh, on the on the beach, maybe on the like a uh, tennis, uh, uh, maybe um, if you guys selling something tennis uh, uh, item, make sure put it in the tennis um, lifestyle image like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, I understand. I 100 percent agree with you saying. And the last uh, um, question, I mean not question, maybe advice. Um, right now, currently, Amazon has you know intense competition among you know sellers from China, the U.S. and other country, um, yeah. Europe seller. However, seller from another country are also uh, working hard and making process progress. I mean, so I believe the same is true for the Korean Amazon seller. So, if you uh, have any advice or message for Korean Amazon seller, um, please share it. Yeah, so something I always say uh, for people from specific regions, like people from Korea, people from China, people from Italy, Spain, etc., is like mm -hmm. you guys have always something that the person on, on the market you wanna sell to, uh, don't have insights to. And what do I mean by that? The fact that you're from Korea, most likely you have insights about products from Korea that nobody else have especially in Korea that you guys are very big when it comes to beauty and when it comes to cosmetics, you have insights about certain trends that sometimes um, are yet not in the USA or are going to come to the USA. So use the region to your advantage. For example, um, just to give an, an example so you can make the comparison. In Italy, we're very good when it comes to food. We know what are some of the things people like when it comes mm -hmm. to cooking and all of that. So that gives more imagination when it comes to that. The same for Korea. I'm sure you guys have certain trends when it comes to behavior and culture, and you can use that as part of your pro development. But on top of that, you have to consider that in the US, for example, this is a very big Korean community. Like mm -hmm. if you do your research, there's a lot of people from Korea that live in the USA. So then why not actually do some kind of brand or some kind of product that tailored toward that niche in the US, right? Or yeah. maybe some kind of product that convey this, um, you know, the culture or mm -hmm. some of the um, the habits of people that live from Korea to the US. So there are so many things that you can use from a cultural point of view 
um, from tradition, that that alone can give you so many ideas when it comes to diversification that other people from other countries are not gonna have. And therefore you can use that to your advantage and come up some, with some branding ideas that can make you stand from the crowd, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you are right. We understand Korean people, right? <laughs> better yeah. than American and then better than Chinese yeah. people, yeah. That's a good yeah. idea, yeah. So, Vincenzo, thank you for your time. Um, please be kind to Korean Amazon seller when they contact you, um, right? Please. Yeah, of course. I yeah. will 100% give them my <laughs> my warmest hug. I'm going to make sure to uh, give you as much, you know, first of all, advice as possible. I'm always all about that, sharing wisdom and making sure we all can make it into this exciting journey that is selling on Amazon. And as basically I said at, at the very beginning, like feel free to reach out at any time. You can find me on all social media as Vincenzo Toscano. And you can find my company by looking for Ecamsi. And um, whatever you need, we're going to be for you guys. So, yeah, it's okay. been a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for having me, both of you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for today. See you next time. Bye. Thank you. Pleasure. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.